ocean to the ocean. In many cultures around the world, girls and women hear, oh, you're unlucky on the boat. You, you should stay home. We won't catch any fish if you come out with us. But in Newfoundland and Labrador, there was a word for it. It's called jinker. Um, well, my name is Megan. I'm 21. Um, I grew up in Newfoundland and I study psychology at mine. That's kind of a passion of mine. My name is Callista Greening. I'm from Corner Brook, uh, Newfoundland. And I'm currently a 21-year-old university student at Memorial University. I'm Carrie Oakey. Uh, that's a recent name change. So uh, a lot of people find that humorous. I live in Petty Harbor. I moved here. A few years ago, I moved in with my boyfriend at the time, and now he's my husband. With Girls Who Fish, we don't just, you know, go out on the water and fish and then stop it there. We like to, I guess, explore other, uh, like, Newfoundland traditions that we never had the chance to. So something we might do is, like, go hiking and you know, maybe forage for berries or learn about other plants that we didn't know we could eat around here. So at Girls Who Fish, we kind of, it can go any which way. There's lots of different things that we do, depending on the weather mostly. If it's a nice calm day on the water, we'll go out fishing. That's typically what we aim for. And then um, we'll go out and catch our 15 fish. Uh, and then we'll come back and fillet them and we'll do filleting lessons and how to clean them and then sometimes we'll cook them. So it's a big day of like being a fisherman for a day kind of thing, a uh, fisherwoman at that. I mean, you see girls from all, from all walks of life walk into here. It's, it's pretty cool. Some people who have fishing in their family, some people who have never gone fishing in their life, some uh, older women who uh, who just love getting out on the water. It's, yeah, it's pretty fun. Oh, it's really great to be able to learn from everybody because, you know, I guess the older members have a lot of wisdom and experience that we can learn from, but younger people often have like these really crazy new ideas that no one really thinks about. So everyone brings something to the table, I guess, no matter their age. To me, Girls Who Fish means empowerment of women and reclaiming what never could have been ours because of the gender stereotypes that people were conditioned to believe <laughs> um, back in the day. Girls Who Fish is, I guess, a really good opportunity for me that I didn't have growing up because even though I was, you know, I've always been like on the water and working with like codfish and stuff, I was usually just sort of like on the sidelines watching like my dad or my uncle or my grandfather working with the fish. But now this like Girls Who Fish gives me the opportunity to learn some of that myself and be more independent. I had a baby who I couldn't take out on the boat uh, so my husband did most of the fishing, but um, Girls Who Fish gave me an opportunity to leave Angus with my husband and, uh, and I would go out with the girls. That was really exciting for me because I was used to going out sometimes three days a week in the summertime to barely being able to go out at all unless we found a babysitter. So uh, Girls Who Fish was great for that. The relationship I share with Pity Harbor is a little complicated because I did grow up here and I didn't have the best home life. <laughs> so it's kind of like, there's a stinge of like, ugh, but this place has really changed that narrative for me and I'm able to be like, I love Pity Harbor because of this project. 
and because the people around here are so awesome and welcoming and creative even and yeah I, I just this place really you know helped me see the beauty in it. I guess even though I've been you know on boats and going fishing for my whole life pretty much um, it's still really exciting getting to go out every time. I always get you know get like really giddy suiting up and putting on the life jackets and getting all the fishing rods ready. Um, I guess that sort of like childhood joy never really goes away. The feeling of being out at sea is magical. It's, it's yeah, it, honestly putting it into words is difficult because it is such a unique experience and just like the balance is different, the feeling is different, the air smells different, <laughs> the weather is sometimes, <laughs> you know, different, so. Um, yeah, it puts you in this trance and it's just very, very unique. Feminism to me is, of course, equality where it was so male dominant, I feel like there does need to be a bit of a swing where women are kind of like, I need to take over for a little bit and like get as much control as they can. So then we can kind of have that swing come back and then it's more balanced. I just don't, I don't want there to be like a war against men and women. I want it to be like a collaborative thing. And that's kind of what we try to do here. Yeah. So if we're talking about a gender equity issue, we should also be considering not just the gender issue, but are we welcoming all women in? So it's intersectional also. It's, you know, it's not just gender, it's race. It's not just race, it's culture. It's, so it's an intersectional feminism that we're talking about here. If we're gonna be talking about the future and what the future holds for us, everybody should be at the table. And of course, if we're talking about fishing, everybody should be in the boat. I wanna get as many people in the boat as possible. So we're gonna start with women.